What's up, y'all, and welcome to a new edition of Deploy This. So, since my last video, which was just a few days ago, where we deployed on Heroku, we have had a lot of things change in the deployment world. That thing that changed is that Heroku is no longer offering free tier options as of November 2022. So within the next few months, they're going to start deprecating projects, which means that it might be time to start looking towards Heroku alternatives. So if you want to see some deployment action, go ahead and subscribe so you can see some more uh, deployment videos and see just kind of what other options there are. So with this next JS application, we've deployed on Vercel, which was super easy and painless. And you know, it was painless on Heroku as well, but we will now have to pay, you know, $7 a month or so for our um, application, which, you know, if you have one primary project that you want to, you know, run, that's not too terrible. But if it's a handful of multiple projects, then, you know, you might want to look for alternative stuff. So we're going to look at DigitalOcean um, for full stack applications for you know dynamic Next.js applications, they unfortunately are not free. So we run into the you know future Heroku situation where it's a paid instance. It's a little cheaper. It's I believe five dollars a month, but we're not taking advantage of a feature of Next.js, which we could use if I were fetching this data from some other API. Um, get static props and so that way if you know I, I've got all that data internally um, on our project but if we were fetching it from another page the get static props allows us to bundle you know all of our props at build time and have that as like pre compiled information which is really cool however we really don't need it per se and so I've actually just moved that data from our backend to our uh, index page, and that way it's present there, and I can just run my just regular old, you know, build stuff and have it um, be kind of you know pre-compiled already. So we're we're kind of shifting gears here because we didn't really need a dynamic application anyway, since this is a very dyn or very static site. And two, moving this allows us to have a very easy kind of export phase. So that way we can look at some other static site options. So I, I really wasn't looking at other options uh, outside of what I initially planned until Heroku's announcement a few days ago. So shifting gears, I might look at something like Netlify or Cloudflare uh, as well, just because <laughs> Uh, Heroku is kind of forcing all of our hands as developers. So let's go ahead and actually check out some digital ocean action and uh, the changes I made to our code. So I just moved this from the back end to, you know, our actual page itself. So that way we have um, that easily bundleable. Now, if I were fetching it from, you know, some external API, where I could actually like resolve the URL, then I could use a, you know, the get static props function, which will run at build time. And if you had like an API that has like a set amount of like blog posts or something, then you could have it fetch all of those. And when it runs the build phase of your application, that becomes, you know, predefined data here. So it's not gonna dynamically fetch at runtime. It's gonna be part of the application from the get go. So get uh, static props is a, another phenomenal, you know, reason why I like Next.js because you can do just some quick, um, uh, you just get way faster loading sites. Uh, we're gonna go for the full static site generation aspect though. So I really don't need anything to run dynamically. I can just have everything kind of pre-compile to just a bunch of HTML. And so I did switch up my um, my package.json to include a new script. And this new script is, um, I just named it export. And it's still gonna run the regular build script, but then it's gonna go ahead and do that static file export 
with the next export command and I specified the directory to be outputted to a you know underscore static directory um, I probably could have left it like build or you know public or you know whatever you wanted but I named it underscore static because that is something that DigitalOcean actually looks for automatically by default so that's just like one fewer item we have to uh, do it probably looks for the other ones as well but you know we'll find out so I've got this export script to build everything and create a static site and bundle everything for us automatically um, DigitalOcean has a whole lot of stuff available like they are a phenomenal uh, platform I have a ton of infrastructure through DigitalOcean they're independent they're not like some of the big providers nor do they have stuff piggybacking they're truly like their own in-house um, service so I, I am a huge huge fan of them I don't use their app platform too terribly much uh, most of my stuff is within you know droplets where you get full um, hands-on servers you get like pretty much bare metal access so if you're no stranger to you know a limp deployment or a lamp deployment or something um, then you know droplets might be a pretty feasible alternative as it stands the app platform keeping in the spirit of everything that we've done thus far um, is pretty much just that kind of one-click process so we'll load up uh, from source code it's going to pick up on changes to a specific branch automatically and redeploy if we enable that let's see and so yeah I mean here it's selected the main branch and said hey you know if you want to auto deploy every time you update that branch we'll go ahead and do it so I will enable that feature by default um, they're going to treat this like a full stack application because they're like hey this is a node app right and you're like well yes but no so it's going to interpret this as you wanting to have a full stack application running and i don't i i just want a static site to be built and uh hosted on their cdn and so by default you know it's going to treat itself as a web service and it's going to default to its, you know, pro bundle instead of just its basic stuff. But, uh, you know, kind of like the Heroku model, it's still not too terrible for like one application. But if you have a lot of projects you want to deploy, probably not the best use case. So for our use case, since it is just a plain static site without a whole lot of need to, you know, have anything dynamically run, we are going to change this from a web service to just a static site. For the build phase, we do need to edit one thing here. We're not just going to run the build script. We are also going to run the export script that we had just defined. The output directory. OK, yeah, so uh, like I was saying, by default, it's going to look for static, but it also will automatically look for a dist, public, and build at the root of your uh, directory. So, you know, I mean, I could leave it empty or I could manually specify it. I'll do it manually. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but um, we don't really need to do anything else. You know, we don't have any environment variables to define, and we don't really have any other custom stuff to get into. So I can just hop to review. Oh, and as far as static sites go, you know, they are free for the first three that you have. And any, you know, further additional ones, $3 a month is a very nominal cost, very reasonable. Um, so if you just have a lot of miscellaneous static sites, this is really not a bad offering. If you are going back to what we were talking about earlier with the droplets, if you're a little handier, with a Linux server and you're not afraid to kind of dive in and get your hands dirty or have some previous ops or DevOps experience, that can be pretty reasonable too. I have a server, I don't even know my infrastructure costs at this point, um, but the cheapest server you can get, the cheapest droplet, is $5 a month. And if you have automated backups enabled, it's 20% of the cost of the server. 
So that would be an extra one dollar a month. So six bucks a month gets you like weekly backups on a you know just effectively a bare metal server. Uh, so very inexpensive offering, and you could get a slightly beefier server for like fifteen or twenty bucks a month and have that host a handful of apps, which is what I have uh, doing. So I've got a few applications deployed on like one primary droplet, and. If you want this kind of automated deployment setup, you know, you might have to use some CI software like, you know, Travis or Jenkins, and you might have to set up a reverse proxy like Ingrok to be able to receive incoming webhooks from GitHub or, you know, GitLab or Bitbucket. But uh, once you do get all of that established, it'll be pretty quick, relatively speaking, to get pipelines for a few more applications up and running and that way you can have a really cost-effective solution as well. That's a little more in-depth and a little more involved. So if you do want to see what that process entails, I do have an older video where we go over the process of deploying on a LIMP stack, L-E-M-P, Linux, Nginx, MySQL, and PHP. And that might be, you know, something you could be interested in. So that does incur some cost, but very cost-effective. Uh, unfortunately, with Heroku, they their offering of seven dollars a month, you know, performance-wise is pretty comparable with a droplet, but it is a very tight scope. It's basically just like an application container, whereas a droplet is a full server that you have like unfettered access to. You can install additional software, and uh, it's you know, it's kind of a way better solution in my opinion. So. Here we are with our static site built, and the benefit of it being a static site too is it's going to be blazingly fast um, through DigitalOcean compared to, you know, having to, I mean, it's still going to be really fast um, on Heroku and Vercel, you know, as a React site, just interpreting everything uh, and evaluating it in runtime, but still being able to compile it to static, you know, pages if that's what works well with the site you know that's always going to be the best um, solution so if you have something like a portfolio site where you just have like external links maybe at most and you have no real like javascript functionality required or very minimal stuff you know that might be the better solution because it's going to be really really fast um, but yeah um, Another benefit of the droplets, which I know that today I'm focusing on the app platform and not the droplets themselves, but you know you can install whatever software packages you want on there. So if you want to have your server and your database on the same host, which I mean you could technically do, I usually like to have kind of isolated uh, bounds, but you could just create you know a new database instance or you know several new ones um, on the server itself. And instead of spending like 15 bucks a month for their managed database, you know, on prem, you know, uh, on your server itself, you can have those databases running if you're comfortable with managing them. So the droplets are really um, my favorite part, but I'm trying to keep up the spirit of the original video series before Heroku kind of shifted focus. So we're going for free and fast and easy. And that's what the app platforms offers us. So I hope you enjoyed checking out the app platform. And I do have another video on the app platform itself. So I guess this is technically my third DigitalOcean video, but I can link that as well if you want to see a little more in-depth offerings with that. You know, we did a static site today, but that was a full web service with a connected database. So if you uh, enjoy this video and you want to see more of what we're offering, Go ahead and subscribe so you can get that little notification for the next time. And until then, I'll see you later.